Hey kids, it's Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. And welcome back to the channel for another of my bargain bike reviews. Today I'm on a bike in one of my favorite genres. It's the sports touring genre. And this is a bike that has been very much requested on the channel. A bike that's taken me quite a bit of doing to get my hands on. Today I'm riding the BMW K1300S. And this is a 2012 model. Pick one of these up these days for around about five grand. Stick around and stay tuned. I'll tell you all about it. All right, before I tell you about how the bike feels to ride, let's uh, show you around the bike. Give you a bit of a bit of a look at her. All right, before we get too carried away with this beauty, here's a look at her then, and I've already blown what I think of it. I think it's a handsome looking machine. Look, if I come around the front and uh, show you this, it's proper sports tour of this. It's uh, a really nice looking machine I think. Let's come in close and I'll show you some of the details. This massive front end on it which is uh, a great fairing keeping all the uh, wind off you. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Something that's uh, unusual, look at the bottom of the bike and the way the fairing goes all the way along there. Now I don't know if that's a bolted on piece or if that's standard but I like it because just think of the amount of crud that that's going to stop throwing up at the bottom of the bike. I think that's really interesting i haven't seen that on a bike before that's that's uh, a nice touch coming around the back here we've got these um, panniers which are quite unusual now i might have to put the um, the phone down and resort to the helmet camera for this let me just show you this how this works look you open this here and this then comes out and it sort of extends and it's kind of like um I suppose it's a bit like uh, the Vario panniers that uh, BMW have on the GS now. Inside here you've got a waterproof bag as well. So if you need that extra room you can have it and pack it out or you can shut it right up like that and have them in this uh, little dinky type look. And they do look quite cool don't they when they're like that. So that's something I've not seen before. Uh, single sided swing arm which I think looks really nice. Massive uh, exhaust pipe on here. Uh, coming around this side you've got a shaft drive which we'll talk more later the other pannier and uh, yeah there we go that's about it i think uh, it's a nice looking bit of kit all right the question is of course as usual does she ride as well as she looks well let's jump back on and uh, find out all right welcome back aboard so much for what she looks like how does she ride well in a word very nicely it's a four-cylinder machine so that means it is super smooth. I'm a big four cylinder fan. And if you're in the touring bike world, then it makes an awful lot of sense because of course touring bikes mean you're gonna do a lot of miles. And if you do a lot of miles, you want a lot of comfort. So vibrations on a four cylinder machine are kept to a minimum. And that is the case with this one. So yeah, the engine, not only is it super smooth, it's super powerful on this as well. 175 brake horsepower, would you believe? Absolute monster of an engine on here. This is the sort of BMW that has all my favourite bits of BMW about it, actually. It's got telelever front suspension, or as we sometimes call it, funny BMW front suspension. Which means that when you brake hard, you don't get any nosedive. I like that. Some people complain that it gives you a bit of a feeling of disconnect between what the front tyre is doing uh, and what you, know, what you can feel through the bars. But I'm used to it. I ride a GS a lot that has the same suspension. I'm a big fan of telelever front end, so it's beautiful. It soaks up the bumps and you don't feel much of it. And as I say, an added bonus, no brake dive when you come to when you come to brake. So that's a favourite. The other favourite BMW feature it's got is shaft drive. No chain maintenance on this. Again, a great thing if you're going to be touring. You don't have to worry about carrying chain lube with you. The shaft basically looks after itself. That's another feature of BMWs that I love. And then it's got there's just the right amount of electronics on this. So I say this is a 2012 model, so what's that? 11 years now, 11 years old now. But it's got the electronics you want. It's got ABS, it's got traction control. It's also got ESA, BMW's electronic suspension adjustability. Down on this button, this is exactly the same as I have on my 2013 GS. You press that and you can change the, the suspension on the fly from normal, where I've got it now, to sport, which stiffens things up. Or comfy, if you've got a pillion on, you want a bit more comfort, you can stick it there. I'll stick it on normal for now. Uh, it's got tyre pressure monitoring. I mentioned ABS and traction control. So yeah, it's got the stuff that you need. Oh, and heated grips as well. Uh, and BMW heated grips are absolutely brilliant. So it's got the electronics you want on it. Nothing else besides. So yeah, it's got all those little ingredients of BMW-ness that I love. 
but it's got that four cylinder engine as well so it's a treble maybe quadruple whammy i don't know all right what else about it then? what about the comfort well the seat on it actually feels really nice and comfortable it's very roomy as well i can move forward and back on this bike very not easily indeed i'm a sort of medium sized to short fella five foot eight 74 kilograms on a good day and it fits me just fine on getting my feet flat on the deck and the riding position is comfy it is sort of sporty i am led forward as you might be able to see i hope on the 360 camera but it's not that risky i've not got a load of weight on the wrist if you're used to riding full-on sports bikes this is very very comfortable and if you move forward you can pretty much sit bolt upright as well and make it as comfortable as you like so all day comfortable as far as the seat's concerned handlebars are these clip-on style but they are quite big quite wide quite high so again you're not you're not putting loads of unnecessary weight on the wrist so nothing wrong with the comfort the ergonomics of it is fine your legs are tapped up in a sporty position but i quite like that then you've got this big screen on here as well which does a reasonable job of keeping the wind off your torso i've got no sort of wind blast on my body and legs i'm completely protected by the fairing on here but that's uh, i have got a bit of wind hitting the top of my helmet and as i say i'm not a tall fella so if you're a bigger person you're probably going to have your head in the airflow you might want an aftermarket windscreen on here because this isn't actually adjustable but it doesn't do a bad job of protecting you everywhere else so yeah from a comfort point of view this certainly scores highly all right what are you looking at when you're riding it well you've got this simple dash i love the white speedometer on this it reminds me of sports cars of old and then you've got this uh, little rpm gauge on the left actually where am i going to go here let's just nip past these boys Sorry, I'm going to cut in slightly. He's not there. Around we go. I was in the wrong lane there. I just thought I'll try some slightly smaller roads as well on this ride. Corner's lovely, actually. Lovely and stable, this bike. I think it's got quite a long wheelbase. So it's one of those bikes you have to sort of give it a bit of input to get it round a corner. But it's kind of set and forget. It's nice and stable on the straights. And once you're cornering round, she tracks lovely. I guess help by it's quite heavy weight as well. Talking of its weight, in fact, let's go through the specs now on the bike. All right, let's take a look at the specifications on this bike then. Quick whiz through the numbers, starting off with this engine. This is a 1293cc four-cylinder unit, actually developed in conjunction with Ricardo. They're the people that did the Bugatti Veyron, remember that? 175 brake horsepower, 103 foot-pounds of torque. Incredible unit. The brakes on the front here, you've got dual 320mm discs with four-pot calipers. On the back, you can just see through the spokes there, you've got a 265mm disc with a two-pot caliper. Suspension wise, take a look at this big old uh, fork here and if you look up under you can see it's the funny uh, BMW front end, otherwise known as Telelever, which personally I'm a big fan of. And not much to see at the back here but there we can see the stepper motor that controls the ESA, the electronic suspension adjustment for the rear. Seat height on the bike is 820mm which sounds quite high but actually because it's nice and narrow at the front I can get my feet basically flat down even though I'm a shorty. Massive looking fuel tank on here carries 19 litres of fuel. And last but not least, let's talk pricing. When they were new, according to MCN, these came in at around about £11,000, which was very expensive at the time. This one, though, at the time of filming, is available at Superbike Factory. I'll put a link below to them for £5,087. Those prices do vary, but uh, yeah, around about five grand for a bike with all that capability. OK, so welcome back aboard. Before we went through the specs, we were talking about the dash on here, which I think is lovely. It's got what you need. It's got a little LCD display on the right as well. And then as far as the switch gear is concerned, it's all classic BMW. Heater grips on the right here, same as my GS. And then on the left, you've got that suspension control lights and so on. Nothing complicated. This button with info changes the various information screens in the LCD to look at your tire pressure monitoring, Odo, temperature gauge, that sort of thing. So it's not really lacking anything as far as I'm concerned. No riding modes that I can discern. But I'm quite happy without them, to be honest. Just enjoy riding the bike. And then the mirrors on the fairings, I quite like them mounted that in that position. You get a good look round your shoulders and uh, elbows. A little bit of vibration through them, but nothing terrible. Not sure if I like them or not actually, this design where the mirror kind of pokes out from the housing. But anyway, they, they work fine. Right now we're in slower speed. Let's just see what the fueling's like. Here we go. Second gear. 15 miles an hour. Fueling seems pretty good.
Mm. The bum ticket. Look at this really slow balance. Is lovely at slow speed. Very nice indeed. All the bunting up here in Amersham, ye olde Amersham, I don't know why that's still up, but it all looks good. It's a nice hanging basket, it's what a beautiful place, you don't always appreciate do you, where you live, but uh, it is lovely around here, only sport maybe by all these parked cars, but people have got to park somewhere haven't they? It's just a treat frankly to be out riding in the dry, it's been such a poor summer this year so far, but it's a lovely day today, about uh, 21 degrees when I'm filming this. Nothing behind me, let me just try that front brake. Very strong front brake on here. Let me just try it again. Yeah, not, not grabby at all. Comes on in a progressive manner. Like that. Let's try the rear. Our uh, rear's a bit spongy. But then rears are often like that, aren't they? Yeah, I can see myself certainly travelling miles and miles on this. That is what it's designed for, after all. What I would say is the clutch is quite stiff. The sort of... Uh, lighter clutches that we enjoy these days on the slip assisted uh, clutches really only came around I guess in the last I don't know seven or eight years this one I guess has got none of that it does feel quite you have to give it quite a bit of heft but you get used to that no problem so these bikes as I say it's got all the uh, elements of the things that I like about BMWs in it yet they don't make them anymore I don't know where they stopped making them I, I'm, I'm guessing 2017 something like that but I'm not sure And I uh, can only imagine it must have been the emissions laws and changes that, that put an end to these. Which is such a shame because this combination of the excellent BMW shaft drive, excellent BMW suspension and a four cylinder bike is such a great combination as far as I'm concerned. As much as the boxer engine gets so many plaudits, the twin that's on the RS and on the GS, I don't much like the way it looks on bikes with those cylinders sticking out the side. No problem with this. And of course this is so much smoother than the Boxer. Right, a little bit of dual carriage way. Let's just uh, nip past these cars. Wow, well, there is no lack of power here. And it is so stable on this big sweeping corner. Absolutely beautiful coming around here. Yeah, the bike feels planted. I think maybe due to its aerodynamic shape and its weight, it feels absolutely stable when you start to wander on. Okay, coming into 50 now, so I'm gonna to slow it down. Yeah, lovely at faster speeds. You could cruise on the Autobahn or dual carriageways, motorways on this for hour and hour, after hour, and you'd be in complete comfort. I like it a lot. So, time to summarize my first impressions review of the K1300S then has it lived up to my expectations which were quite high because I'm a BMW fan and I like the look of this bike and I love four cylinder machines and I have to say it has it is an old machine this at, uh, as I say at Superbike Factory you can pick this up for a smidge over five grand an awful lot of bike for the money it's got all the electronics you need on it and no more it's got that awesome engine on here bags of power super comfortable super stable I like it a lot and once again it just shows goes to show something that I've learned again and again on these on these reviews where I've been re reviewing bargain bikes and classic bikes that you don't have to spend a fortune to get something that is really really nice to ride you don't have to get the new newest bikes the latest and greatest there's a lot of fun and a lot of comfort and a lot of capability to be had on something that's a few years old like this Beamer I guess the only downside for me is maybe the weight I stopped to put some fuel in a little bit earlier and uh, you know she's a bit weighty when you move her around you kind of expect that with this type of bike I guess and then the handling may not be to everybody's taste because there is a bit of a lack of feel from the front because of the telelever front end I actually quite like that and you do have to muster it around the corners it's not a bike you'd describe as agile but again in the touring role I quite like that so it, to me it completely makes sense anyway hope you enjoyed that do let me know uh, if you've got one of these, if you've got anything to add in the comments below, because then we can build a resource for prospective owners to have a look at. Thank you for watching the review. I'm really enjoying doing these uh, bargain bike and classic reviews that I'm doing, thanks to my channel sponsors, Superbike Factory. Do go and check them out. They've got an incredible website. I'll put a link below. And I warn you, you can spend hours following that link and looking at their website, because you name the bike, 
they've probably got it there they've got uh, thousands of second-hand bikes for sale and uh, yeah it's a great place just to browse and peruse and see what your next machine might be all right that's it for now hope you enjoyed that look forward to speaking to you again soon until then this has been the Mr. and Flyer cheerio <laughs>